Hello, so this is um, this is a, uh, a project I've been undertaking over the summer where um, actually it's a it's something I've been doing for or pursuing for quite a while. Um, I think since the first uh, time I tried to play blindfold chess, I realized, oh, if I can do that, then I can compose away from the keyboard. And so I worked on it mostly with jazz, um, taking jazz tunes, like memorizing the, pro the progression and writing, uh, writing out solos. Um, and so, so I've been doing that again. Uh, but I decided I'd try uh, since I just had a, taken a fugue uh, course here at FSU to uh, try to use some of that knowledge in um, writing counterpoint away from the piano. So. Um, and all, and all of the things we covered, it actually makes, at least in my mind, maybe this sounds, uh, I don't know, like even make, but it makes it more difficult, but to me, because of all the um, uh, procedures that are really important in fugues, um, uh, it seems like it's sort of made, ready-made for, for doing, uh, for something to do away from the piano. Um, so... Uh, so anyway, this is uh, the first, my first attempt really at writing counterpoint away from the keyboard, and uh, you know I've been doing jazz solos for so long that more of the tonal stuff is actually easier to hear. Um, although sometimes I um, don't default like to uh, tonal harmony, um, and in some cases, uh, in many cases, for example, like here. And by the way, I annotate this just like I would a chess game. I guess you could say that I'm using um, what I learned about chess to um, and I'm bringing that into music. Um, so we play a game of chess. We go over that game. It's not it's not presumed that if you win, that it's actually um, you know the result that should have happened. And that something we learn um, actually if we want to really be competitive in chess, we'll actually go over our games even if we win, and try to find some improvements. And this is something that um, Gary Kasparov, you know, talks about a lot and other, other great chess players. And, and as much as chess and music have similarities, I think that it's, it's not a bad idea to, um, to just sort of find your mistakes before, <laughs> before other people do. Um, okay, so anyway, here, I'm just, I'm just sort of uh, sharing this on, on one hand because I don't think that... Um, it's not it's not enjoyable to do this completely you know by yourself. It's nice to share you know music that you're making and stuff. And uh, um, it's not so much to sort of like say oh look what I can do as as uh, as much to say like you can do this too if you want. Um, it's really just a matter of um, uh, deciding this is something that you want to do. I think. Anyway, um, it was difficult for me at first, but it took a long time to kind of develop the memory to, um, or rather use my memory maybe to hold this kind of stuff in it. And, um, yeah, it, it takes a, it takes a little while. My, my process, I do everything and mem I, everything I write, I memorize. And so what I do then is I input the notes into Sibelius. And so, um, I haven't heard anything until I hit play basically. And so what happens is, um, then I just basically hit play and listen to it and I, I'm kind of aware, you know, as, especially as I'm putting the notes in, like for example here, um, I don't remember uh, that I really came up with this this particular note. I mean, uh, I don't, I'm not sure it was there, but it seems like, it seems like, you know, it was uh, probably, um, maybe at one point I decided it should be there. Okay, so, so I just decided to go ahead and put it in. And uh, just make a note that and my note here for the purpose of this note is so that the next time I do this, I'll look at this, review my notes, and realize, oh yeah, okay. So don't take for granted that I'm making, you know, all these decisions. I actually, need to make the decisions here. So um, this left hand bar, for example, um, I didn't uh, exactly 
we just figured, I don't know, as, as I was coming up with this, I figured, okay, it's a, it's a, we're modulating to D major, so there's a, a five chord of D, and, and uh, I just sort of took for granted that the left-hand line would be there. Again, uh, a note for myself. Um, so there are notes like that, probably three or four. Um, and then there are notes like this, where uh, the actual notes that I came up with were were not quite that great. So um, this I'll play. It's going to be a MIDI file playing. So if you'll forgive that, um, let's see if you can hear it. Okay, so this is the improved version, and this is the original version. It seems to me like the um, this raised scale degree um, is better to save for later in the bar. So I'll play it, play it from here, I guess, because it's, it's a little easier to hear from. This might might not be quite so bad here, but definitely here uh, the A sharp I think sounds much better a little bit later. Okay, and uh, so then let's see, um, things like this, decisions that I didn't actually make, but somehow I expected my left hand would be here, so I didn't really decide that the left hand would jump up. Um, I guess I just figured it would arrive there, I don't know. Um, so these decisions, you know, the next time I um, do a two-part, or maybe, probably do another two-part, or maybe, maybe three-part, I'll try to maybe push myself, um, I'll remember to do that. And then here I was trying to set up some sort of um, some sort of phrygian cadence into E minor and uh, and have the um, the few subjects in inversion and uh, in the original here I have uh, parallel force which sorry um, I need to play these two which isn't quite so bad, I guess, but when you hear, it's a little, it, 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 it's a little more, it's a little smoother. So, um, something to remember, I don't think that I would have come up with um, parallel diminished, wait a minute, okay, uh, sorry, uh, it's an augmented fifth and then a diminished, jeez, uh, uh, diminished fifth, augmented fourth, okay, so, uh, somehow, um, I'm thinking really more of the uh, the interval, like outside of the key relationship. But in any, in any case, um, this this sound sounded better, and um, so I just made a note of that. Probably wouldn't think to do that in my head, you know. Um, but uh, I also didn't really calculate so much that it was parallel force. Okay, so um, now here. Um, it was a bit abrupt. The original uh, was a bit abrupt um, because we. I guess I introduced this um, uh, five of the subdominant here, F major, um, and then I then I obliterate the um, the B natural right away. So um, I thought when I when I worked this out a little more to just go ahead and not cancel out the B flat until just before the melody, the, the theme comes back, the fugue subject comes back. Um, again, another measure I took for granted. It seemed to me like a lot of those I was, um, they, they were occurring at cadences in the left hand. So, you know, this is it's easy enough to remember next time, just make sure to know exactly what the left hand's doing. So I ended up having to basically compose this. And I think, I think I actually, I might have, this might this might have been a, a variation, if you will, that I calculated or thought might work, but um, I couldn't be too sure, and I didn't really like the way it sounded anyway. So I just um, chalked it up to something I should improve. And um, yeah, I didn't. I don't know. Somehow, it didn't it didn't occur to me to just go ahead and go to a sub a predominant here, like a, the the two chord, uh, then going to the five, and I instead went right to the five chord. But this sounds a lot better. Um, okay, so I'll play the result. Um, yeah, and I was working on this. I kind of was walking around the house doing things, and you know, um, and it was running through my head. And 
and then I would take a break and like answer an email or answer a phone call and come back to it. And as much the way I do blindfold chess, um, my, my ultimate aim is to um, be able to um, really write whole pieces in my head. But I mean, you can see the limitation I'm setting. I'm setting up limitations uh, along the way, so I hope you enjoy. Um, here we go. Um, yeah, nothing uh, really stellar, but um, but so I, I but I think actually um, you know I may I may be headed in a very interesting direction with this at least for me. Um, I know there as I hear it, there are a few bars that still stand out to me as um, not being quite the best choice. For example, I, I think uh, the, this parallel fourth here. Um, from the E and A and the B and F sharp and the B, yeah, that could be could have been improved. I'm just letting it go for now. Um, I think, you know, the main thing I want to do is is bring in to my next um, uh, blindfold composition of this sort um, a handful of things to remember to improve. Um, just pointing it out right now, you know, when you do the inversion of. Uh, subject and the counter subject, like it appeared there, um, it's probably a good idea to just double check that the intervals are, you know, working out the same way. And clearly they um, they aren't. But um, so anyway, yeah, this is uh, the first. This is the my very first try. So I, I feel you know somewhat good. I feel like it was you know in the sense of like a chess game that I won. I got to the end. I got all the notes that are, I remembered. The notes I put them in. It basically made a piece, um, and so. But there is there are a lot of improvements. I couldn't if I were this were a chess game. I couldn't kid myself into thinking that I had won the game and made all the right decisions. So um, yeah. Anyway, uh, if you'd like to know more about um, a lot of the the similarities that I find between chess and music, feel free to ask. Um, but um, I also love to hear any criticism anyone might have. Um, so. Uh, <laughs> of course, if you like it too, I'd like to know that. So anyway, I hope you enjoy, and um, I will be doing more of these. So take care. <laughs>